And welcome back everyone. We are continuing our conversation now with the Commissioner of the New Hampshire Department of Education, Frank Edelblue, who's here in studio to discuss the COVID-19 outbreak and of course what it means now for schools. Governor Sununu ordering all public schools closed through at least April 3rd with remote learning to begin by March 23rd, which is a week from today. That's next Monday. So thank you for being here, Commissioner, again, and I'm going to get right to some Facebook questions that have come into us here. Okay, Kristen is asking, I have a high school aged child who thinks it's okay to hang out with friends, what would you say to help them understand why this is happening and what they're expecting to accomplish by cleaning each school? So when they're cleaning schools, clearly the focus is on trying to create a safe environment for the students so that they don't have risk of infection with COVID-19. Um, but relative to hanging out with their uh, friends, I don't see that as a problem at all. Quite frankly, I think that that would be great, particularly if those students want to get together and work on some of their instructional stuff together. Uh, that would be a great way for them to engage each other and support one another because it may be that one student really understands a particular subject and another student is struggling with that. So why not help one another? out and encourage one another through that process. I think that's going to be an important part of really the whole mental health aspect associated with students now finding themselves in this home environment. Maintaining a personal connectivity. Exactly. Okay, let's, Stephanie is asking, why are high school students in Manchester being made to check in daily either via Google Classroom or email or be marked absent? So the school is basically trying to make sure that they're in a position to be able to support all of the students that they can. And so I think that that check-in type process is one that the local district has decided is going to be effective in making sure that they have an opportunity to answer any questions that the student might have. Maybe they want to clarify something or work with them. So I would just encourage the students to work with their school district as we work through this transition and know that the educators are there to try and help them, really help them and support them in what they're trying to do. Okay. Okay, let's get a, a question from Derek asking why are teachers still required to be at the school exposing themselves unnecessarily when the kids are at home doing their online learning? Yeah, so what we've discovered is in different districts, the remote instruction and the remote support model is being implemented slightly differently, sometimes from the school building out to the schools. And in some schools, there may be part in the school building and some working from some of those educators working from home. It's really a decision that they are making, but I can assure the educators that because you have a small smaller cohort, if it's just the educators, the risk is very much diminished. Let me ask you to return to a point about IEPs that Monica asked you that there was a question that came in and there are in some instances you were explaining cases in which the student might be better served actually physically showing up to a school. Can you again explain what you meant by that? So what you may have a student who needs specific physical therapy. It's very difficult to do physical therapy remotely. Um, and so we have physical therapy rooms in many of our schools, which is where those students receive that physical therapy. So it may be appropriate for that student to come in, receive that physical therapy in a very small cohort. It may be that one student and an educator or a couple of educators or a couple of students. So very small cohort, lower risk. And right now we feel comfortable that that can be delivered so that we can continue to support really the needs of that student. Okay, case by case basis, case by I would case imagine. Basis, absolutely. Actually, okay. that's why they call it an individual education plan because yes. it's individualized for each student. Okay, let's get to Rebecca's question asking, I mean, this is a big one. Will mandated state testing be suspended for the school year? Yeah, so we have been working very closely and provided a lot of information out to the schools about state testing. We've extended our three through eight assessment. So the testing window now extends all the way until June 19th. So it's premature really to decide that we're gonna walk away from that testing. Uh, I know that the SAT was originally scheduled on March 25th, and there is a lot of conversation around where that will be rescheduled to. So we've got alternative dates and alternative approaches to administer those assessments for students, um, but we're not in a position to be able to walk away from that at this point in time. Okay, as you can see, there are a lot of parent questions out there. Great. We're gonna These ask you to questions. stick around. I love this. Okay, this we're gonna wonderful. get in a very short break and then the commissioner is back with us on the other side of that. Thank I you. I can do this for hours. <laughs>